I guess. It's just a dog in a bowl. Um, so about three weeks ago, I went to my local uh, miniature market to just look at stuff. And I noticed that there was the latest uh, Dungeons and Dragons players hab book for uh, 2024. I took a look inside and I, I liked what I saw. So I just purchased it and I thought, well, maybe I'll play a game with my family. And as I was getting into the rules, I realized like this might be a good use case for uh, an application to help me build this. Cause honestly, this whole process was me avoiding having to go to the store to pick up printer ink and more paper and perhaps replacing my printer if it doesn't work because I haven't touched it in a long time, right? So this is uh, probably way more time than I needed to, but it's been a lot of fun. So I'll go ahead and uh, share what I did. So what we're looking at here is an obsidian uh, canvas. This is so my, my first thought was, okay, maybe to start this project, I need to establish what the data structures are because RPGs usually have pretty complex in-depth data structures, right? So I wanted to make sure I understood as much as I could. So as we zoom in here, I thought like, well, we'll start with a campaign as like your basic unit. And then, you know, we need settings, descriptions, uh, characters, NPCs, monsters, players, journal entries, maybe. And I just kept defining structures as I went. And it was pretty straightforward at first. You know, your character has a lot of basic, like, simple attributes like HP, max HP, its name, things like that. But then you start getting into the weird areas. And it usually came in the form of any other attributes that are not consistent throughout each, uh, I would say class. So for instance, if you picked up the barbarian class, now each character could potentially have rage and rage uses, for instance, or if you went with a monk monks, just, they get the chi resource, right? And spell casting is different between certain classes. So that became very hard to work around. And I thought like, I don't want to set up a structure where it's just purely key value. You know, I'm not trying to recreate roll 20 here. I just want to have a, just a, a, a digital character sheet. So I don't have to print. Right. So as I dug into this, I got kind of overwhelmed and I backed away and I was like, Ugh, I don't know what to do with this. So I started over, went to V2 and the V2 was structured around me using, uh, how would I would describe this? Yeah, just thinking in terms of complex versus simple values. And maybe perhaps using payload CMS at this time. Um, I've been a fan of payload CMS for about a year now so far, I think. A year and a half maybe. Um, and structuring things as in terms of collections and then the kinds of fields you have in those collections. And in payload, you have the notion of a relationship field that can relate to other collections that you define, right? So I kind of structured it in this way and it made a lot of sense. But then again, like I felt like I was making it too complicated and I don't know why I was doing that. I thought like maybe it's just like the coder mindset of I have to make things as efficient and, and code reusable as possible, right? And I what I discovered is like that's actually really easy a trap to fall into, I would say. And you might, because it's it's a lesson of the, the perfect is the uh, enemy of the good, right? Where, what if I just simplified it and said, none of this super normalized structure, because eventually I got fed up with this and I backed away and I was like, okay, I'm gonna take a walk. <laughs> I took a walk, maybe took a drink, of tea and you know took a break next day I came back and then I just started thinking like what do I want to see you know in the admin of this site like if I'm making a character what am I doing to to the form to create my character right how are things grouped together so I started thinking in this way and once I got to this point and let me stress like 
I probably wouldn't have gotten to this point had I like been a better developer. I had to go through these thought processes that helped me understand the the basic structures, right? And then I got to this point and I was like, you know what? It took a lot of thought to get to something simpler, right? And I think there's a lesson there, I'm sure. <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's what I did. So I started going through this and this is the point where I started using payload in conjunction with Obsidian to kind of get an idea of how things would be structured. And I started with the character sheet because that's like the the basic unit that you're going to be playing with in, in, in D&D, right? So I did that. Now, what I did after that was I uh, set up a payload instance. I used the payload 3.0 beta, which is, I think, going to be coming out of beta here soon. Um, but I was too anxious to, uh, to wait, so I wanted to use it right away. So... You have the uh, the basics here. So you open the source, you have your collections, and you have your application. The application includes the payload and then any routes that you might define, right, um, in your application. So this is how payload embeds itself into a Next.js web app, which is great. Um, most of the focus was starting on the character sheet. So literally it was just this index file. And as you can see here, there was a lot of things to configure. Let's see, we got down to <laughs> over a thousand lines of code. Um, and a lot of this is me just going through each and individual basic trade at first and then grouping them together into rows so that they look a little bit better and then trying to work out like what I need. And eventually I just kept going and going until I had equipment and monsters and um, spells. And, and then I think I kind of stopped at monsters because it was, it was spells and equipment which included all weapons, armors, and tools, and things like that. And once that data was in there, which wasn't a huge task, I didn't do all the spells. I did all the the weapons and, and items and armor after that, but um, everything else was uh, pretty straightforward. So I'll go ahead and hop over to the app here. Let's see if I can find the tab here. Okay, cool. So this is the, uh, this is payload. So as you can see here, I just had that collapsed. And here we have our players. So here are the, the characters. I, I just named them <laughs> generic names because I didn't want to reveal their names, but uh, on this video. And then we have campaigns. So we happen to be, have chosen all elf characters. Two of us are, are drow and two of us are high elves, right? And uh, it's and a panda because my son loves pandas. <laughs> And yeah, so as you can see here, this is my first use case of the join field, which is great because all of these characters are associated to this campaign. And this campaign also knows that they have characters because there's a join field that selects on that notion. So it's really cool to be able to do that, have a two-way binding situation. And then we can go into the, uh, the characters. So this was the first thing I worked on. I guess I'll start with this guy here. So this is my character. Um, and as you can see here, these are all the fields that I've defined in payload. And I tried to qu categorize them in tabs to make it easier to work with. Um, one of my most favorite things about this experience has been going through the fields and making them work. And then also using what over here, what's called a UI uh, component. And in this UI component, all, all I'm doing is grabbing all the data that's on the page. And I'll show you how I do that in a sec. And then I'm just loading what I need to load in that right uh, side. So in this case, it's only using the image, which I, in the notes tab. And then, yeah, so we have actions. Um, you know, I just put the details I care about the most here. I'm, I'm probably gonna expand this at some point, but just to have what I, I care about up front. Uh, I went through every single, single thing that, you know, my character gets, um, any equipment th this is relating to the equipment table. So I can look for any other type of equipment I want. If I wanted to add that, um, general statistics that relate to the instance of that. And if I wanted to take a look at the details, I can look, I can see that, oh, there's mastery. Um, there's the, the properties that that weapon has. Oh, I don't know what sap does. So I click that and I can see, okay, so this is what happens if I hit a creature, um, so the data is there so I can quickly just click around and get to it, which I'm very, very happy with. Um, and all I did was build the fields in 
by, by just defining data declaratively, essentially. So just to, I guess it's a really good showcase for the power that payload can give you in this, this form. Um, we also have a spell sheet thing here. So this character is just a, a fighter, <laughs> so he doesn't have any spells. I can show an example of that in a sec, but even with this dancing light spells, if I hit edit there, you can see that the dancing lights form, you know, I just kind of built that out. And then I built a little card to make it easy to read all the details in one spot. And I'm, I'm looking to expand on this in the future, but uh, I really like that UI components give you this kind of flexibility within the, the CMS. I was originally planning on separating like a character sheet application away from this payload CMS, but since I'm not like looking to sell it or do anything like that, I was thinking of just maybe just embedding whatever I need as plugins into this, this local instance and maybe making a desktop, making it a desktop app or something like that. Um, if I wanted to share it with someone else. So yeah. And then notes, I won't go into those details, but, uh, yeah. And technically a lot of these could be calculated on the fly, but that's where I stopped myself. And I realized that's, that's more work. <laughs> that's more complicated complications that I, than I was thinking of. I was just, so I just update these according to my spell feats and all that, uh, or class features and all that. So backing up, um, let's see character with a lot of my wife's character here and, uh, still need to add her actions of course, but as you can see here in their spells. So she has statistics for, you know, Druid and wizard, you know, and then I just put in the values so that when we actually use them in play, I can just quickly refer to them. And then here we have a lot of different spells. And if I wanted to learn more about cure wounds, I could just click that and see all the details like, Oh, it's a uh, verbal and somatic. It's instantaneous when we can boost it up, you know, all these details at my fingertips. Wonderful. Oh, also a uh, courtesy of, let me grab the name of the website here. Uh, CG dream AI. Um, to generate these images, they give you a hundred credits per month, uh, per day, I think actually. And that that's enough for about four images to be generated. I didn't really need a ton of images in my, my scenario and I'm, but if I wanted to, I could pay for more, I guess, but yeah, it's a really great system. Uh, I recommend looking into it. CG dream.ai just to call them out. Um, but I just didn't, I didn't want to point that out because I, I didn't draw all these images or anything like that. And they're clearly AI generated. So spell descriptions. So I have about, you know, it's like 22 of these here and they do exactly what I was showing before. So there's that. And if we go to, so these two collections are just purely for the data I need to collect. So, so I don't have to look into a book for like, what does two handed mean? Like, obviously that's obvious, but you know, I don't have to look that up. Same thing with these. So that's all the whole reason I made these two collections is just to refer for the data. Uh, purpose later on. This is the big one right here. So as you can see, it covers ships, items per day, tools, simple items, stuff that I wanted to be able to just search, add, be done, move on, <laughs> you know, look at the cost, subtract, move on. Um, this took a while to do, but it was really, really neat because when you create a new one of these it starts out simple. So let's say this is a, a rock <laughs> and then we, with the rock weighs a pound and it costs zero. Sure. And you can change the cost type. Let's say it costs one copper. Sure. Now here's where it gets cool because of the conditionals you can have for the fields in payload. So, um, if it's a weapon, for instance, I can get the weapon form. If it's a armor, I get the armor form and these are all different depending on what you need. There's also a subcategory. If it's other tools, I get different fields, right? For adventuring gear, mostly just descriptions for mounts. How much does it carry for these things? Is it a saddle? <laughs> and for large vehicles, there's different stats on those as well. So I just wanted to show like, you know, for this equipment, uh, status, it, it just, it's flexible because I wanted to make it the same field for every um, type of item. Uh, it should have been called items really, but I was able to do that within the payload framework without having to expand it too much. Um, what I will say though, is that one thing I commonly ran into and it wasn't a problem per se, but 
anytime I ran into, say, any kind of array, if I wanted to do something besides the default here, I had to create a custom uh, label component, and then that would be used in these spots. And I'll show you examples of those, but most of the time I'm just grabbing the name field of a array, and then I'm setting it into the text of the component for this, and then now I have those without having to expand them all the time. Um, same thing with these. Uh, you actually have to query for the relationship, get the name out of it, and then put it into the component, for instance. So it feels kind of cumbersome. You do get it kind of used to it because the way you query data in payload is actually pretty straightforward, but it is like more than you would expect up front, I would say, instead of just saying like, hey, just use this property for most things. I guess with arrays, you don't necessarily know what you want. So I don't know. I'm not sure what the limitation is there exactly, but I could probably do something similar here. I can collapse this and make it output here. But I guess one benefit of that is that you have the flexibility to do what you want there. So I can't complain too much there. And then finally, we have the uh, monsters. Um, this is one of my favorite ones, actually. Like, we'll start with the ape. So here, I just got the field rights, fields right. Um, this is more so just enter what you need, no calculations necessary. And then I just did the simple cards. Um, this is... I mean, it's a lot of data, but the overall actual outputting of the data was very simple per thing. Um, I might have to filter here and there, for instance, like if there's no uh, immunities, for instance. Yeah, like let's say uh, bludgeoning. Now he's got bludgeoning vulnerability, for instance. The conditionally showing that versus not, um, that can be kind of annoying a little bit. But otherwise, I mean, it was pretty cool. Uh, I added a thing for the image to make it look more unique you know and overall I just felt really really happy with the way this came out um, I kind of want to do a similar thing with the character sheet look so you can get a nice at a glance look at your character stats and their abilities um, and if we take a look at the next one uh, I did a sepia tone thing to kind of make them all look same-ish you know kind of look uh, consistent um, again uh, CGA uh, CZ dream.ai is how I generated these um, but you could also just take a phone picture, upload it, and put it into your, your thing here. So I was, uh, yeah, again, really happy. This is probably one of the most complex characters, monsters that is, that are in the player's handbook. I'm looking forward to when the monster manual com comes out so I can add some more interesting monsters into this list and reuse this application for that purpose. Um, so yeah, and that's the gist of what I've done so far with the, the application and just to give you an idea of the code involved so for instance with the character card this is where i define the field that shows up um, on the right side so here i just put it here and this is it all i do is i use a couple of a uh, hook so we have this use all form fields and then reduce fields to values this is what produces a structure that i can kind of just extrapolate and put into my component right um, and then here the use effect makes sure that we can grab the image from the media collection and then assess the value of the image url where i need it i throw it on this div and then the div just styles it according to what i want and then it just shows up on the right there um, another good example is the spell card so just to repeat using the same basic stat, you know, grabbing all the values on that page, echoing them out, basically how I need them to, to look, and then styling them up. And then, of course, the uh, monster card, similar idea. There's a lot more data, obviously, and there was some repetition, so I had some subcomponents created, but just style. I did as minimal style as I could. I didn't want to spend all my time doing this, but yeah. Um, and I feel like I missed something in my explanation, but here's an example label where you just put whatever text you want in the component return, essentially, and you, that's what becomes the, the array label uh, for each iteration. So, yeah, I mean, overall, really happy with this result. I'm, 
I just want to stress that like, you know, this is one of the few times that I've actually felt motivated to continue working on this project after hours, you know, when, I, when I don't have to do this at all. Um, and it was only really possible because payload made it easy to create these forms and store the data and manage that data. Right. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you ever want to do something like this, uh, I would say give payload a try, especially once the, the payload three beta is out of beta and, uh, they figured out all of the, the little quirks. I mean, as you can see, it's, I've done a really good job here, you know, just like really enjoyed my time with it. Um, there were some hangups, but you'll find that if you look in the, the, the documentation that most of it's there, um, it might be hard to find some time, but sometimes, but it, it's definitely there at some point. Uh, and you, the problem might also be that you're thinking about the problem a little bit differently than you need to. I know I've, I've done that a couple of times and I was like, Oh yeah, it's much simpler than I thought. So yeah. Uh, I hope this was useful. Uh, hope this was interesting and, uh, I'm going to go back to eating rice. Take care.